Hey everybody, I'm Richard Roper and this is a special Rollin' on the River edition of the Roper Rundown. What are your favorite movies set on, in, or near the water? If you say Sharknado, we got a problem. Dead Calm, The African Queen, The Abyss, Master and Commander, Finding Nemo, all terrific films set on the water, but they just missed making my list of the top five aquatic movies of all time. At number five, The Perfect Storm. George Clooney gives one of his best performances in Wolfgang Peterson's almost unbearably tense adaptation of the 1997 book. The visual effects and the sound editing were nominated for Academy Awards and deservedly so. The outstanding supporting cast includes Mark Wahlberg, Diane Lane, and John C. Riley. The final moments of this film will stay with you for a very long time. At number four, Open Water, another intense drama inspired by true events. Daniel Travis and Blanchard Ryan star as an American couple on a scuba diving vacation on the Great Barrier Reef. When the dive boat crew makes an inaccurate head count, the couple is left behind. Hope gives way to panic and despair when it becomes increasingly likely the tour boat isn't coming back. The couple battles hunger, exhaustion, jellyfish, and then the sharks start circling. Great camera work, strong performances. Writer-director Chris Kentis and his wife, producer Laura Lau, finance the film themselves. Made for just 130 grand, open water grossed 55 million worldwide. Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> At number three, a slightly more expensive movie, Titanic. Yes, James Cameron's epic is thick with overwrought dialogue and soap opera romance. And yeah, we can all go the rest of our lives without hearing Celine Dion warbling about our heart's gonna go on and on and on, or anyone other than Leo DiCaprio proclaiming, I'm the king of the world! But nearly 20 years after its release, Titanic remains one of the most visually stunning films in the history of cinema. This was the first film to gross $1 billion, and it won 11 Oscars, deserving most of them. At number two, I'm going all the way back to 1944 in Alfred Hitchcock's Lifeboat. Based on a John Steinbeck story, it stars Tallulah Bankhead, Hume Cronin, and Canada Lee. The entire movie takes place on that boat, which holds a handful of survivors from a U-boat attack and one German who was on that U-boat. When the movie came out, some American critics trashed Lifeboat for being too sympathetic to the German character. But Hitchcock said the central message was the Allies needed to set aside their differences and band together to defeat the Germans. Like so many of Hitchcock's films, Lifeboat has become even more appreciated with the passing of the years. At number one in a landslide, or should I say a water slide, Jaws! It has one of the ten most recognizable music scores of all time. Great performances by Roy Scheider, Richard Dreyfuss, and Robert Shaw, and dialogue that lives on to this day. Steven Spielberg was just 27 when he directed Jaws. There were so many problems with filming on the ocean and the mechanical sharks collectively nicknamed Bruce, Spielberg feared his career could be over. Actually, the shark itself is the least terrifying thing in Jaws. The genius of the movie is how it preys on universal fears and phobias and anxieties. You have to remember to stop holding your breath in anticipation. Spielberg keeps us off balance throughout. The movie opened on a then unheard of 456 screens in the summer of 1975. Not only did Spielberg create the best movie ever set on the water, he invented the summer blockbuster. I'm Richard Roper, this is the Chicago River, and this is the Roper Rundown. You're gonna need a bigger boat.